All right, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Math Lesson 13. Today, a little easier one. We're talking about multiplication as repeated addition, and we're also going to talk about adding and subtracting dollars and cents. So let's go and take a look at what's in front of us, okay? You might run into some problems like this. There are four rows of desks with six desks in each row. And they're always going to ask you how many desks are there in all, right? So you got a couple different ways or three different ways of finding this answer. You could go and count each desk. But I put a little frowny face there because, boy, I prefer to work smarter, not harder at my age. You could go ahead and add each row of six four times because I have six plus six plus six plus six, right? That would give us 24. That leads the bridge over to what we're going to talk about. You can multiply each row of six times four because instead of counting six four times, that's why you end up talking about multiplying as timesy somehow. But we're actually going to use the word multiply. But we do it because we're counting it six times four. Okay, hopefully you understood that. Let's move on and see what we're going to do with this. We're going to run into some problems like this. Let's say write a multiplication problem that shows how to find the number of x's. Well, I have three rows, right? How many do I have in each row? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I could go three times seven. And they always want you to write with the answer also. Hopefully we know the start of our addition facts. Three times seven is going to give you 21. If you don't believe me, you could count them out the other two ways we showed you, right? Or... You could go and reverse it and say 7 times 3 is 21 also. You don't have to write both on these problems. If you read the directions, they'll say just write a multiplication problem. So not too tough so far, right? Let's keep moving on. Here we have write a multiplication problem for each addition problem. And just a reminder, it's going to be the number that you're adding times the number of times it's added. So here I'm adding 9. How many times am I adding it? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, right? So you would say 9 times 7. The number you're adding, which is 9, times how many times you added it. Hopefully you know it's a 9 problem. If you remember your finger man trick, 9 times 7 is going to give you 63. Here I have 15 that I'm adding 4 times. So I could just go ahead and say 15 times 4, right? Now 15 times 4 is a little bit of a trickier one. Hopefully you know, or you could just add those up. 15 times 4 is going to give you 60. Or in the case down here in the bottom, I have 21 that I'm adding two times. So I can just call it 21 times 2. Hopefully you know 21 times 2, 21 plus 21, that's going to give you 42, right? Still not too tough. I don't usually meet too many fifth graders who struggle with this part. Here's the part that sometimes fifth graders struggle with. When you add and subtract money problems, here's your rule. If one number in the problem is written with a decimal point in cents, they all must be written with a decimal point and cents. If you're going to go and try to subtract $7.37 minus five dollars. One problem or one number has a decimal point in cents, so you're going to have to take this five 
and write it in with a decim point and cents as well. You don't just line up the $5 over on the right hand side because this is $5. This is seven cents right here, right? This is sometimes the mistake that I see fifth graders making a lot of. So let's go ahead and take a look. Find each sum and difference, right? So we know even if the book has them horizontally, we want to line them up vertically, right? So I'm just going to take my numbers, get them all nice and lined up. Okay, so once I have them all lined up nice and neat, I'm going to just draw in my decimal points and my cents, right? Nine dollars, nine dollars and zero cents, two dollars, right? It is two dollars and zero cents, even though that's not the way we pronounce it, right? Nothing is the same as zero. Now let's just go and start adding our columns, right? Not too tough here. Five plus zero plus zero, seven plus zero plus zero. Three plus nine plus two is going to give us 14. And then just go, don't forget to write in your dollar sign. Not too tough still, right? The trickiest part. If one of them has a decimal point, they all have a decimal point. Same one over here. Let's take a look. $8.19. Even though the book writes them out horizontally, we're going to set our guys up vertically, right? Once we have them written all in vertically, then if one of the numbers has a decimal point and cents, they all must be written with a decimal point and cents. So I'm just going to draw that in and get ready to subtract. 9 minus 0, hey, that's 9. 1 minus 0, that's 1. Not too tough so far. Bring my decimal point straight down, and 8 minus 7 is also 1. Don't forget to go ahead and write in your dollar sign, right? Okay, let's keep moving on and see what else is in front of us. Check out this one. Mr. Hines walked 5 miles a day each day for 4 days. How far did he travel after 4 days? Hopefully you know the answer. The trickier part is this may or may not show up where you would have to set it up as an equation with a variable. So using our old sum plus some more plus some more plus some more, he walked five miles a day for four days. You could set it up this way or you could also set it up as Five times four, right? But if you're going to set it up as an equation, something with a variable, with a letter, it would look like this. Maybe you want H for Heinz. Okay. Am I going to combine terms or isolate a variable? I think I am combining terms here, Mr. Heinz. 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5, hey, that's going to give me 20. 20 equals H. Because I did not underline the equal sign and I did not underline the H, right? Let's move on again. Check out this one. I think the first time it shows up, remember my rule. If it is written with a variable, we have to show our steps. I don't care if the book has it written vertically like this or not. We're going to set it up horizontally. 632 plus C equals 701, right? So now, do I want to combine terms or do I want to isolate the variable? I don't have two numbers on the left side of the equal sign to combine. I only have one on the right. So I think I am isolating my variable, right? Let's get the letter C all by himself. 
So I'm going to circle 632 and plus, and I'm going to kick it over to the other side. I'm going to rewrite everything that is not circled. I didn't circle C, I didn't circle equals, and I did not circle 701. I'm going to write down everything that I did not circle first. Then I'm going to go and bring my plus that I kicked so hard I changed it into a minus, and then I'm going to write my 632. Now am I going to combine terms or isolate a variable? I have two terms on the right side of my equal sign to combine, correct? And remember when we combine, we just bring the answer straight down. But we read our equations left to right. So I first have to ask myself, what's the first thing not underlined? That's C. Then equal sign is not underlined. But 701 minus 632 is. So this is where I may want my scratch piece of paper going. So I better figure out what is 701 minus 632, because I'm not going to mess up my equation and start going the wrong direction. I'll figure it out on a scratch piece of paper. And hopefully you can figure out on your scratch piece of paper that that's going to equal 69. C is equal to 69. Showing all my horizontal steps. Check out this one. First time we've had one of these, so I figured I'd better talk about it. Jim bought two boxes of pencils, a pen, and a notebook. What was the total cost of the items? Here is the tricky part. It's more of a reader and paying attention. I don't think anybody's going to struggle with the math. He bought two boxes of pencils. Well, pencils are a buck fifty a box. So the big mistake kids will make sometimes is they'll go a buck fifty plus sixty five cents plus a dollar sixty nine. But it's really a dollar and fifty cents plus a dollar and fifty cents plus a dollar sixty nine plus sixty five cents. And I have to keep talking right now because my pen is writing really slow and so this might really seem annoying to you right now, but for whatever reason, I don't want to stop talking until I have this all written down. But I do have a new computer getting ordered, so I'm really kind of excited that it should be able to speed up my math creation lesson. So now I finally got that all going, lined up nice, neat, and straight at the decimal point. And I'm not going to bore you with the addition algorithm. So this is the end. You are certainly going to want to have a scratch piece of paper and a pencil for the Socrative quiz. Good luck.